Hey there guys, it's DJ Slope here from Slope's Game Room. Check me out, I haven't put a video on my channel for like, what is it, like 10 or 12 days, something like that? Um, first video I've done in a little while. Uh, yeah, apologies for being gone, uh, people that watch my stuff. <laughs> uh, but I've got a pretty good uh, excuse. On the 10th of October, uh, August, sorry, 10th of August, um, we uh, had another little baby. Yes, uh, my wife gave birth to a lovely girl called Annabelle. Um, a lot of you already know this if you're following me on social media. And guys, thank you so much for the incredible amount of um, uh, DMs and stuff I've been getting on my personal <laughs> Facebook, my Facebook fan page, and, and Twitter and whatnot. Um, yeah, I really, really appreciate it. Um, all healthy and well, which is really, really good. Uh, obviously, it's been taken up ahead of a lot of my time. Um, but, uh, yeah, going full swing into Slope's Game Room again. Uh, I've got, uh, this whole time I've been scripting. I've been playing a few games. I'll show you some pickups and stuff that I've been doing. Actually, I'll, I'll start straight away. Cave Story um, for the uh, Nintendo Switch. What, look at this, it's got a little soundtrack and a manual in it. Hell yes. Uh, I completely completed that by, you know, <clears throat> sitting next to the hospital bed and whatever, you was in there for a few days. Uh, uh, yeah, you know, been playing that. I've been doing a few things behind the scenes. I've been scripting a hell of a lot. So, uh, basically, for the rest of August, you're gonna be seeing a lot of videos, including another video today. Um, I am gonna be putting up my Sonic Mania opinion videos very much a love letter to my seven-year-old self rather than a proper review. Um, I've wanted this game to come out for a very long time, as I'm sure a lot of other Sega fans, Sonic fans have. Um, so this video is basically uh, a, a video for me. <laughs> uh, I'll take quite a while getting to the point. But anyway, you'll see that. That's coming up today. today. And then you've got another video coming up tomorrow and another video coming up this weekend. A brand new complete history um, on a not so popular, a bit of an obscure one actually, uh, of a Capcom franchise, I suppose, I suppose but there's really only one decent game, but yeah, uh, of a Capcom um, um, series, whatever, a Capcom character, I think that's probably the best way of, uh, the best clue I can give, uh, a popular Capcom character, Complete History will be coming up this weekend, I have another Complete History coming up before the end of the month, which is probably the most obscure uh, Sega complete history I could possibly ever do because it includes video footage of a Sega game, an official Sega game that pretty much I only have a handful of other people in the world but there's not one bit of footage anywhere on YouTube of this Sega game. <sighs> Exciting, I've had this one in the works for a very long time, I've had to go to the developer, talk to them, blah blah blah, it's been taking a very long time but it is coming um, hopefully this month. Uh, on top of that I've got another amazing, uh, actually another Sega branded video coming up in between them that uh, uh, will, actually one of them is going to be featuring this guy. Yes, uh, it, it's a really cool month for videos coming up, so uh, even though it's been a little bit quiet for the first like, couple of weeks perhaps, um, it's about to go full pelt and you're going to actually, as a total, get more videos in the month than I would if I just did them once a week. But yeah, let me show you a few things I've picked up and I'll get straight into the Q&A. I picked up Ghost Blade um, uh, from PlayAsia, little box set game, only 20, I think it's like 24 pounds. All you people out there that are going mental on, uh, what is it, like limited game runs and stuff, that, you know, with games, you know, selling out in the space of 20 seconds or something. I was really gutted I didn't even pick up Night Trap myself, but in hospital, you know, more important things. Um, yeah, I, I highly suggest you go check out PlayAsia. In fact, I'll put a link for this game, um, uh, Ghost Blade HD, in the description. Look, it comes with a, a, a nice little soundtrack, which is a fantastic fantastic soundtrack. I've listened to this one a lot. It's so, so good. A bit of slap bass, high energy, techno sort of uh, uh, sounding, typical schmuck music, you know. Let's have a quick sip of my coffee. Um, yeah, reversible game, little manual. Oh, the, the disc's actually in my PlayStation 4. Uh, stickers, because, you know, we all need stickers. And my one is um, number 2981 of 3000. I oh, just shared yeah, about 23, 24 pounds. I don't know what that works out for you guys, you know, other parts of the world. But yeah, that's not bad. Like I say, I'll chuck a link in the description. It's definitely worth checking out. 
um, uh, a good old Enjoy the Ride have been sending me raw records. I've got the original Good Charlotte self titled album with the split red and blue. Me and my wife quite like a bit of Good Charlotte, so uh, we're loving that. We got, uh, I'll show you <laughs> this one, The Fresh Prince of Bel Air. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Uh, I, obviously, I'm not doing proper videos on these, they're not video game related, but I know a lot of you guys out there like the whole uh, uh, vinyl, you know, soundtracks and vinyl releases. Look at that. That's lovely, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Um, so I thought I'd quickly show you and before I get to the Q&A regardless. And this one, oh, crank. By Mike Platoon from, um, what is it? I can't think of their name. Um, never mind. The Crank soundtrack is incredible. Faith No More, that's the band I was thinking. Faith No More. Look at that! <laughs> Such an incredible one. That's a double one, that one. Uh, some nice artwork and what have you. But uh, yeah, I thought I'd quickly show you those before I get to the Q&A. Oh, and this. Me and Larry have been looking for this ball game for quite some time and it cost us an arm and a leg to get it imported from America. Went to a boot fair this weekend. Randomly found it for a quid. Opened it all up and it's pretty much all there. There's like one tiny bit of card that isn't, but it literally doesn't make any difference to the game. I'll, I'll, I'll make that up myself. But a pound, how good's that? I mean, this is like a 30, 40 quid game anywhere on eBay. Well chuffed for this. Uh, yeah, Roller Coaster Tycoon. Very heavy, heavy game. I may do a midweek video reviewing that. I've, I've been really interested in that since I saw Lazy Game Reviews like pass it up on a, in one of his episodes of Thrift's. Um, uh, um, probably quite a while ago, but yeah, always wanted that and now I've got it. Anyway, well, what we'll do now, what we will do now, so I'm on very little sleep at the moment, uh, we'll get into the Q&A. Question number one from Daniel Mara, and Daniel asks, no questions really, if anything, I'm just wondering when you'll be finished being sexy yourself. Question number two from Ian A. Chapman. Is there a complete history you want to do that isn't commercially viable? Or rather, what would be the least profitable project you actually want to do? Um, so the complete history I want to do, and the one that I've tried searching for the most is probably uh, Power Stone. I don't know why, I mean, I, I like the games, I'm not obsessed with them or anything like that. I've just always been interested in Power Stone and for whatever reason, uh, I, we never did that video. Uh, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I can't find a decent amount of information on the history of that game. I've gone to the developers of the game, uh, but they're very much like, I need to go directly to the publisher before I can do that, and it, it's very, very hard. I've not ever been able to do Power Stone. Uh, perhaps one day on Slope's Game Room, I will do it. Um, but in the other part of the question, least profitable, uh, I know when I put out videos like Squeak, and what was that one, Bounder, not going to be getting any kind of money in from that one in regards to you know least profitable complete history and i'm going to do more videos like that i like doing those um uh there's just something about doing those oh, in actual fact the the complete history coming up this weekend is a very obscure one that like i said it's a capcom character but um yes uh i want to do uh what one's thing on a spring for some reason i don't know why i've just always been interested in thing on a spring i know that's Gonna, no one's gonna know about that, <laughs> except for the hardcore Nova bugs um, out there. But uh, yeah, yeah, I want to do Thing on a Spring. Um, that's a that's a, a Gremlin game. Yeah, it is a Gremlin game. I'll probably do that. I'll probably do Horace one day. Uh, yeah, I, I like chucking in those every so often. Um, you know, they're not games I play too much nowadays, but I do find them still quite interesting looking into the complete history. Actually, this year's uh, Halloween special is gonna be on a, uh, a, a not so popular franchise. Last year it was Splatterhouse, and this year it's gonna be uh, an old home computer game. Uh, it's actually fairly popular, I suppose, but uh, yeah, um, uh, I was looking into doing House of the Dead, but having trouble finding enough good information to do the backstory on that one. Question number three from Tim Labonte. And he says, I love it when developers decide to go for a completely different look or art style for a video game. Though I'm not heavy in the indie game world, I've only really played Braid. But games like Parappa the Rapper, Paper Mario, Akami, Mad World, even Comic Zone and Earthworm Jim come to mind. What's your favorite or top three? I'll make it a little easier on you. Okay. Uh, games with incredible art styles. Um, okay, 
Ori and the Blind Forest is probably <laughs> one of the ones right up there. Uh, that game, I, I always bring that game up. It's generally one of my all-time favourite games, though. That is uh, an oil painting come to life. I oh, love that game. It's beautiful, beautiful. I'm going to cheat and say that Cuphead is going to be one of my next two. Uh, obviously, I've not played it, but uh, I'm going to buy that game on the art style alone. And even if the game's crap, I'm still going to think it's a worthwhile purchase because that game looks absolutely stunning. Um, yeah, I can't wait to play Cuphead. I've not heard the greatest things about the in-game shooting mechanics. Um, uh, the boss levels I've heard are all brilliant, but... The actual in-game levels apparently, uh, the mid-levels, sorry, are all apparently a little bit naff. Hopefully that's not true, uh, but you know we will see. Uh, and for number three, Parappa Rappa would have been a good one, but I won't use that one. Hmm, let me think, let me think. Uh, God, I'm struggling with this. I know a game I'm going to choose. I have to make sure I got the name correctly. Wario Land The Shape Dimensions is not necessarily the greatest game in the world. It actually gets a little bit repetitive as time goes on throughout the game, but the art style in this is fantastic. Like, genuinely playing a cartoon. It's really, really nice. Um, yeah, I really, really like this one, and I suppose Paper Mario. I'll give you four. Paper Mario, the whole Paper Mario franchise look incredible, in my opinion. There you go. Question number four from Creamy Elephant. And thank you very much, buddy. I really do appreciate it. Uh, uh, being such a heavy talker in my patron-only Discord channel. Yeah, I really do appreciate that. Uh, number one, anyway. Number one, um, he's got a few questions here. Uh, following your latest history of the Crash Bandicoot video, with the success of the Insane Trilogy and the surprisingly positive sales of Ratchet and Clank reboot on PS4, do you foresee a potential rise and return of the 3D mascot platformer? Do you think it's likely we'll see an original Spyro trilogy receive the same treatment? I do think Spyro is a... There's a very high chance you'll see a Spyro announced. Whether it's going to be the entire trilogy or, you know, just one of them. I, I really do believe that Spyro is probably coming. In the next year or two on E3, we might see something there. I'm personally more excited about the fact that I mean, say, uh, Sony would be stupid if they didn't do this, but a brand new Crash Bandicoot game uh, in the style of those original trilogy uh, uh, brought out now that they realise how popular it is. A 3D platformer, the way I see it in 3D platformer, a lot of people always said that 3D platformers are dead. Um, you know, they, they died down, they weren't really around except for like one or two games here and there. The way I see it is 3D platformers very much moved into these sort of open world um, I don't know, maybe games like Uncharted or something like that. Obviously they aren't, you know, 3D platformers, but it just seems to be like a natural progression. You know, people that like those 3D platformers very much move towards those style of games, and more of those style of games are always welcome in my books, because I do love a good, you know, adventure open world you know, game like the Tomb Raider games and the Uncharted games and what have you. Uh, I still haven't played Horizon Dawn yet, I need to get on that. But, um, uh, yeah, 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 I, but in, but in regards to classic 3D platforming, you know, with the whole um, uh, ukulele and stuff like that, I do think that it's possibly going to... You're going to see more of them. They're never going to be as popular as they were from, you know, the 2D to the 3D because 2D platformers were all the rage, so moving them into a 3D space was, like, the obvious next step. I, I feel very much that time has passed, but I do think you're going to get in a... Uh, you, you'll definitely get more but you will not be as mainstream as it was uh, in the uh, PlayStation 2 era of gaming. And actually, I think you may have asked another one. Let's have a look. Uh, oh, question number two. Question number two, also from Creamy Elephant. Chili beans or no beans? Chili beans. And question number three, also from Creamy Elephant. Uh, boxes, briefs or nothing at all? Right now, nothing at all, but boxes all the way. Question number five from Antoine Octavio. Um, what are your most played games? Uh, my all-time favorite game is Sonic 3 and Knuckles on the original Mega Drive. So I probably play, I, I, I play that game once or twice a year. So I've played that one a hell of a lot. Uh, Crazy Taxi is another game I've played uh, probably more than any other game ever. Just I, I was obsessed with that game when it came out, like literally hours and hours and hours and hours of fall off the calendar. Uh, off the <laughs> calendar. Um, again, no sleep for me at the moment. 
Wipeout 2097 on the original PlayStation. I played that an absurd amount. Um, wicked soundtrack on that game as well. I need to get that on vinyl. Uh, what else? What else? What else? Um, oh, Binding of Isaac. I played that game so much. Like I completely played through that game endless amounts of times on the Vita, and now I'm doing it all again on the Switch. Ah, uh, what else have I played an absurd amount? Um, Tetris? I know it's like a really obvious one, but I play Tetris a hell of a lot, and, and Columns, obviously, I'm a Sega kid. Um, yeah, I, I play Tetris a lot. Um, I have done in the past. Yeah, I think they're probably the biggest ones, uh, the ones that I've played the most. Can't really think of any others, if I'm honest. Um, yeah, we'll go with that. Oh, Burnout Paradise. There you go, there's five. They're ones that I've played crazy amounts uh, yeah th those five games fantastic games um, probably all in my top five or so um, and on Streets of Rage I complete that every year or so as well add Streets of Rage in there have six there you go there, there's loads question number six from Tiago Piera Dos Santos Silva uh, aka Piera 15XXL and he asks do you like Shining Force Shining Art Geek Sexual Series by Sega I feel like I may have answered this question from Tiago Piera last month. Either way, I definitely answered this question last month. And uh, to reiterate, because uh, obviously he didn't see this, uh, no, I have never, ever, ever played those games. Um, sadly, they just do not grab me. Uh, it's, it's not for me, uh, unfortunately. Um, uh, I mean, I've never played them to give them enough time. I'm trying to long win this answer like I did last time. Uh, I've never tried them and they just do not grab me. It's not the style of game that I would ever play. Uh, so yeah, there you go. Um, that's it. Question number seven from Downright Superb on YouTube. What do you think about modern gaming? Difficult? Do players not notice the subtleties of the gameplay conventions if the challenge isn't high enough? I always make sure the difficulty is above normal, at least. Um, I, I, I personally put hard on after I've completed the game in normal if it's a game I want to play again. Um, people always say about how games are harder, uh, they were harder back in the day rather than what they are now, but I used to think certain games were unfairly hard. A good example of this is the Terminator on the Mega Drive. I never completed it as a kid, but as an adult I finally sat down and worked my way through the game, which is something I always wanted to do. That game got four levels. No wonder it was hard. They wanted to cover up that the game's only got four levels in it. Can you imagine if they released that nowadays? Any type of game, if, you know, no matter how much they put in it, it's only got four levels. Um, and would get absolutely blasted. But, uh, I mean, it wasn't the greatest game anyway, The Terminator. But regardless, um, I feel like games are obviously easier. Um, you can find harder, you know, classic style games out there, especially in the indie space, you know, with things like Super Meat Boy and what have you. But uh, I, I feel games are a lot more fair and a lot more enjoyable um, the way they're made nowadays. Uh, and I don't mean that for the whole majority, because, you know, there are classic, you know, uh, games like, for instance, the Sonic franchise, which I think are perfectly, um, uh, the perfect amount of difficulty in them, and they're the perfect length, etc. But, um, I don't know, maybe maybe games like, yeah, like I say, Super Meat Boy, that's a, that's a hard game, but it's a very good one, and it's, it is a good challenge. If a game was too hard nowadays, I do feel gamers would just give up and play something else. So, yeah. Uh, I hope that answered your question. I just went on a little tangent there. <laughs> And that is it. I was just checking the previous Q&A because I think a few people answered into that one. Yes, guys, that is it. Um, yeah, that, that, that is the Q&A. Apologies, guys, again, for it becoming so late. Uh, there may even be another Q&A this month and that'll probably be in a couple of weeks. So if you are a Patreon, run over to Patreon now, fill in the survey and, uh, uh, you know, get your questions answered in the next Patreon Q&A. If you want to be part of my Patreon list, uh, check the links that you see in the, on the screen, down below, all of that sort of thing. Like I say, there is another video coming up today, another one tomorrow, and another one this weekend. Thank you all so much for supporting the show. Uh, like I say, it's been a crazy couple of months and I really do appreciate all of your support. Uh, this is DJ Slope signing out, and until later on today, I'll see you all next time.